Welcome back. We are sliding with our slider component that we have built. We have some awesome touchscreen support as well as our normal navigation support. And in this last lesson with a slider, we're just gonna take a quick look at the accessibility because that's always important with all of our components. And the good news is I think this is gonna be a lot easier than our sortable component that we did in the last exercise. So let's take a look at first of all, the uh, let's add some keyboard support to this because right now keyboard users using the tab key, you can tab through uh, the slides and it actually moves the, the slides into visual focus. Um, but then you can also tab to the navigation button buttons here and you can use you know the enter key to obviously uh, navigate to those and, and activate those buttons and it's going to allow keyboard users to do it that way but normally i would also expect whenever you have keyboard focus within the slider itself that you can use the left and the right arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate as well so that's going to be super easy because we already have that navigate method that we created in the last lesson so let's go add a quick listener to our component for this slider and add that keyboard support to it and inside of our slider class here, let's go to the init method. And down here where we're creating our event listeners, we'll create a new one for key down as always. And then we'll add a new key down event that we will create at the very bottom here of our class. Key down, we're just gonna accept an event of type keyboard event, which is the key down event. And this is the key down listener. And then first of all, let's check to make sure that we're focused in a slider. So if we're not focused in slider, uh, if e.target.matches this.config.attr, uh, anything inside of that, then let's return because we're not, we don't have keyboard focus in the slider. Um, but then if e.key is equal to arrow left or e.key is equal to arrow right, then we will uh, navigate slides on arrow left, right. So let's uh, prevent the default from occurring and let's this.navigate and then we'll take an element which is gonna be e.target and we will uh, need to specify whether or not we're navigating forward and that's just gonna equal e.key is equal to arrow right, like so. And I think that's it, believe it or not. If I use my right key and my left key, I can actually already, uh, because we created this nice sort of abstraction to navigate either forward or backward, all we have to do is call this.navigate and that's it. That's all we have to do to add keyboard support to our slider component. That was pretty easy because we kind of built this up from the beginning to make our job easier in terms of making changes to this, which is great. And finally, the last thing to consider is of course the visually impaired user experience. So we're gonna fire up Chromebox once again, and we will see how a visually impaired user is gonna interact with this. And I think it's actually not gonna be that bad, but we'll try it out, maybe make a few tweaks based on what we find. Slider, strawberries, berry, so. slider, heading one navigation. Okay, so I'm gonna move the focus of the screen reader into the slider itself. List with three items, strawberries, list item. So you can see that's a pretty good description. We see we have a list with three items. Uh, and if we move into that. Berry, very good, heading two. These strawberries are so good, they'll knock your socks right off. Get you some, visited link. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Uh, and then as we continue to move our screen reader focus through the slider list. Avocados, list item. Avocado bravado, heading two. So it's actually reading the content that is sort of off screen to the right. Uh, and for a visual user, that might not be ideal, but we're using a screen reader here, right? So I don't need to see the content. I'm being read the content by the screen reader. So I think that's okay in this case. It's actually already very accessible. Now, if you are building a slider component or a similar component, where as opposed to having the method we use here, which is a flex box that we're basically panning left and right on, um, if you're building a component where there are list items that are hidden, they're not visible, you're probably gonna have to do a lot more work with the screen reader experience. You'd probably have to set up an ARIA live thing, much like we did on the sortable, and kind of describe to users like, you're on slide two of three. 
uh, and, and tell them what's going on. But in this case, the content's not actually visible. It's just hidden using overflow hidden. So it's just clipped off the screen and uh, it's actually gonna be very accessible for our screen reader because the content isn't visually hidden. So the screen reader is gonna continue to read that as normal content, as you'll see here. These avocados feel the green visited link. And as soon as you actually have a focusable element like the link here, it'll actually change uh, the, the link automatically to try to put it into view. And this is just something that Google Chrome does automatically when you have something that's focusable. Even if it's an overflow hidden, it's gonna try to scroll it into view, uh, which you, you actually can't prevent from happening. It's just kind of something that, that does, and it's, it's real hacky to try to get it to not do that. I looked into it when I was messing around with this example and, and prepping for, for this particular one, and it's just not worth it in my opinion. So just let Google Chrome do its thing and let users using screen readers kind of oranges this. it's citrus go and citrus me timbers visited link and now whenever i go further previous slide button so you can see next I can, slide button i can now actually next use slide the button to next navigate slide button through our slider which is going previous work. slide button just previous fine. slide button <laughs> chrome vox is now inactive Let, let's disable that because i keep hitting it at exactly the wrong time uh, but you can see the screen reader users are still, if they um, maybe are using a screen reader but do have some visual capacity, they could still use the buttons and access those to actually change uh, which slide is visible. So I would actually argue that um, because of the way we built this and not making the slides invisible or uh, display none, this is actually already inherently very uh, accessible to visually impaired users. So I think we, we can call this done at this point. We don't actually need to make any changes um, and, and change the keyboard focus or anything like that because I think this is gonna work really, really well and it's gonna already be very accessible for those users. So that means this is a nice short lesson to finish up our slider component Everything's working really great at this point, and I think this is a really great template for you to use as you implement your own, not only slider components, but really any type of component where you're gonna list content and have some sort of carousel that people can swipe through. I think this works really well in a lot of those different scenarios. So feel free to play around with your slider, maybe challenge yourself and maybe add, uh, oftentimes on a slider, you might see a little uh, dot navigation link at the bottom where people using a pointing device can click on the dot to kind of jump to the third item or jump to the fourth item. And you could maybe add a new method to your class that uh, sets the index uh, based on which dot you click on, and then it updates the st or sets the state and it kind of reflects that new index. I think that'd be a good sort of self-guided challenge. If you want to spend the time to, to try that yourself, that'd be a great little challenge to go through as you're finishing this up. And when you're ready, we'll move on to the next lesson and check out a whole new thing we're going to look at. So stay tuned.